and welcome to the July 20th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. If any member of the public would like to speak on an agenda item or during public comment, which is for non-agenda items, please fill out a comment card located at the back of the auditorium and hand the card to Ms. Rodiger. You may also be recognized by joining the meeting on Zoom video conferencing and raising your hand in the Zoom application. Members of the public may also comment on an item by sending an email to planning at rochesterhills.org prior to the discussion on the agenda item. All comments and questions will be limited to three minutes per person. All questions will be answered together after every person has had the opportunity to speak on the same agenda item. Ms. Gentry, will you take roll call, please? Yes. Chairperson Bernabic? Here. Vice Chairperson Hooper? Here. Secretary Kaltsunas? Here. City Council Member and Commissioner Bowyer? Here. Commissioner Detloff? Here. Commissioner Gaber? He is excused. Commissioner Neubauer? Here. Commissioner Struzik? Here. Commissioner Weaver? He is also excused. We have a quorum. We'll move on to approval of the minutes for the June 29th, 2021 special meeting. Does anyone have any comments or corrections? Chairperson sure, Bernambic, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Kalsunas, seconded by Mr. Hooper, for approval of the June 29th, 2021 meeting minutes. Take a voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Communications, I do not have any communications for tonight. So I will move on to public comment. And public comment is for non-agenda items. I do not have any speaker's cards for that currently. Um, if anyone would like to speak on that, um, please let me know immediately because I will be closing it. Do we have any um, hands raised in Zoom? We do not have any hands raised in Zoom. Okay, Ms. Gentry, do we have any email communications? No, we don't. Okay, in having no speaker cards, I will close public comment. Unfinished business, request for a tree removal permit, city file number 21-004 for the removal and replacement of as many as 103 trees for Grace Senior Living, an 83-unit, two-story senior living facility on 2.8 acres on the south side of Walton, east of Adams, zoned RM1, multiple family residential, <coughs> parcel number 15-17-103-002. JBD Grace Rochester LLC is the applicant Will the applicants please come up to the table? Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Ms. Rodiger, the staff report, please. I'm sorry, Ms. Kapolanski. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, the applicant is proposing to construct an 83-unit um, senior living facility. If you'll recall, this was at the June 29th Special Planning Commission meeting, and at that meeting, this matter was tabled due to a number of concerns. The applicant has addressed those concerns as follows and is looking to receive site plan approval and approval of the tree removal permit tonight. Changes and or additions in response to the Planning Commission's concern. Concerns include the relocation of the dumpster. This was at the suggestion of the surrounding condo owners. A detailed plan for the nature area with the pathway has been provided. A sidewalk from the main entry to the side entrance on the east side of the building has been included. Details of the interior courtyard areas have been provided. Additional replacement trees have been proposed around the perimeter. And a revised landscaping plan with additional evergreen trees in various areas for screening and as tree substitutes has been included as well. Updated elevations and renderings are also provided. There are some changes in response to staff comments as well. Those include alterations to the underground detention system consistent with staff recommendations, a widening of the fire access road near the hydrant. This was a requirement by the fire department 
and a revised photometric plan, if you'll recall, some of the light levels on the interior of the parking lot needed to be adjusted, and that's been done as well. Um, I believe the applicant um, may have a few words to add to that, but otherwise I'm available for questions, and we have Jason Bowden here from engineering too. Okay, thank you. And gentlemen, will you reintroduce yourself for the record? Oops, I'm on. Yes, good evening. My name is Scott Bell. I'm with Lapham Associates. Uh, we are the uh, engineering firm doing the, uh, the site plan, uh, preparing the site plan for tonight. Hi, J.B. Davies. I'm one of the three managing partners of the entity. David Fulkerson, a managing partner. Okay, thank you. And you can move forward. Wonderful. Well, as, uh, as was mentioned, uh, Kristen summarized very well, we have taken the site plan and taken the recommendations and the, the, the comments from the minutes from our last uh, Planning Commission meeting and incorporated those into the site plan, including uh, shifting the, uh, the dumpster uh, enclosure around to the east side of the building, um, including details on the, the uh, nature path area with a detail on a, a type of bench that would be put there. Um, additional information uh, for the interior courtyards as to how those would be uh, laid out as far as with uh, patios and sidewalks and, uh, and amenities that are in there. Um, I do have uh, a couple of photos uh, that, if I could show you just briefly on that. Um, I think I should be able to just do a quick, yeah. So this is uh, a typical courtyard in one of their other facilities. Uh, as you can see, there, the, the open area is landscaped nicely. There's a seating area. Um, the outdoor patios have seating on them as well. Um, that's one of the, uh, one of just the general seating areas. Um, the proposed, on this particular proposed building, we have a much bigger courtyard. We were meeting a 5,000 square foot minimum for your uh, open recreation area requirement. And so our courtyard's a little bit larger than this, but uh, that should uh, give you some idea. Um, I just want to, that, that's one of the things that we'll probably be doing here, uh, a little planter box. The residents are able to roll up and, and do some gardening and plant flowers. Um, they really enjoy that. It's a, a simple, easy thing. In this case, uh, this one is portable, something that can be moved around as needed for functions that might happen. but. We have, uh, we proposed a couple of planter boxes in that uh, as well. Um, another view of a seating area with just a couple of uh, patio tables, et cetera, that's uh, what probably in the center of our courtyard will have some sort of a seating arrangement similar to that one right there. Um, this uh, particular facility has uh, some lawn areas that allow for some re outdoor recreation. Um, this is a, a cornhole um, that's set up. We have an area that we have designated for either cornhole or, um, as we have shown here, um, a volleyball type of uh, thing. I think they probably use beach balls and, and uh, play volleyball. That's uh, another amenity that we'd have in that courtyard available to our residents. So with those pictures, um, we also have, as mentioned, reconfigured the outdoor detention, the underground detention area so that that's been reconfigured. It doesn't uh, have a conflict with the planter, the island in the parking lot. Um, from those changes, uh, there were some other things that we had uh, added to the plans from other department reviews. Uh, the fire, uh, we had to make our fire lane a little bit wider by the fire hydrant in the southwest corner of the building. Um, we did add some sidewalk and ramps to allow access from the front of the building and the side entrance, the east side entrance, to that uh, nature path area. Um, and then the landscaping plan, uh, significant changes in the landscaping plan, a significant number of trees were added, uh, about $50,000 more worth of, of plantings. Um, we, the original plan had 49 trees and 50 shrubs, and, and this plan has 84 trees and 93 shrubs. Um, that's primarily around the perimeter. That doesn't include the foundation plantings, which was, uh, we have provided also details around the foundation of the building, what plantings will, will go in there. Um, there's several trees and over 100, 111 bushes and hundreds of wild fl or flowering, uh, flowers and grasses that we've added there as well. 
Um, the plants that were at uh, the boxwoods, I think it was, have been substituted uh, um, with Korean lilacs also um, from the comments that, from the previous uh, meeting. Um, that takes us into the architectural changes where we have provided, might take a minute, they're kind of big, but there are now four renderings from the four quadrants of the building and uh, showing what the building is proposed to look like with all the uh, added architectural features that were, is it moving or not? I'll double click it, there we go. So this was very similar to the one that we had uh, before from the front, uh, the northwest corner looking back at the building um, <coughs> with the sidewalk out front. Um, really the only change here is uh, the materials on the exterior to comply with the ordinance. Uh, um, overall, we do have the architect on Zoom. He can answer questions if needed in detail, but the facade of the building has 2,888 square feet total. Of that, uh, what we have proposed on our current plans is 1,874 square feet, which is 65% that is uh, masonry or stone. And then the remaining uh, 1,014 square feet would be either siding or, or cedar shakes, uh, depending on where you're looking. But that uh, there is the revised front facade. We changed the position slightly of it, but it does show the uh, the stone. Can you zoom in a little bit? I can. Up top. Oh uh, yeah, I can't scroll unless I do this. So yes, there you can kind of see the building. The facade has much more masonry on it than, than what we had before. Um, let me just, oh, I gotta zoom out to do that. Um, this is from the back corner. This would be from where the dumpster was located in the southwest corner of the building, looking at the corner of the building and the south facade of the building there, as well as part of the west facade. Um, you can see the landscaping there. Um, although the landscaping may not be exactly as we had, uh, our, our landscaping plan and these plans were done simultaneously. We tried to match up species and make them, make them work, but uh, there is an abundance of landscaping, as you can see on the landscaping plans as well. And here is another um, view looking down the, the, east, uh, the eastern facade of the building. Um, you can see the part of the new dumpster enclosure actually in there. I'm kind of surprised that shows up in there. I don't think they knew that was going there. But the uh, similar landscaping uh, against the building, the foundation plantings are there. I believe that's that's the four elevations that we have there. So um, at this time, we'd like you all to uh, entertain a motion to approve is what we'd like. But we'll uh, we'll let you go through the public comment first, and and as well as your comments. Uh, Dave, JB, you have anything to add? It's great. Nothing to add. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You certainly have done a lot of work since the last meeting. So. We appreciate that. Um, I will move on. I do have several speakers' cards, so I think I will move to that first. Ms. Rodiger, do we have anyone that has their hand raised in Zoom? We do not. Ms. Gentry, do we have any email communications? None. Okay. <coughs> and the first person I will call to speak is Pam Long. But we did send some very small <coughs> requests for changes after careful review of the revised planting plan. The first item is dwarf Korean lilacs. We'd like to replace those, there are 10 of them, with evergreen trees or plants because of the sight line barrier. For six months every year, they won't have leaves. The second item is the same kind of thing involving three Adams crabapple trees. We'd also like them replaced for the same reason. That's kind of small. 
But after careful deliberation about the fencing, we compromised. We're not asking for the fencing along the long side of our complex, but we are still encouraging you to consider the fencing at the end. It would be wrought iron open fencing. We carefully reviewed the conversation we had about making the residents feel like they were locked in. But this would be an airy, open look. And until the trees that you are so nicely going to put in mature, it would serve as kind of a visual block from just casual foot traffic. Not necessarily your residents, but people who suddenly have a very clear look from Walton sidewalk right through. Right now, you wouldn't go through that. It's a mess. But after you clean it up and make it beautiful, the access would be clearly visible. That's all we got. OK. OK, thank, thank you. Herschel Long. First of all, I want to thank the commission for considering our concerns once again, and a special uh, thank you to uh, Commissioner Scott who came out and met with our, our uh, committee and with our board of directors to review the site, which was really a fantastic plus thing. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> the request is for our protection and to secure the private property of our community. Shrubs and clusters of trees will not do this. A six foot stockade fence separates our community from the church alongside of us and the south side of our complex, an identical fence separates us from the residents on Rhineberry Street. The Meadowbrook Committee originally requested a, uh, five, or a five foot fence to be installed in two areas, the one section between us, Walton Boulevard and the Grace parking lot, and the other section between Meadowbrook Homes and the Grace property building. As Pam indicated, the, the, we are willing to compromise on that and just do the one section of fencing between Meadowbrook, Walton, and the Grace parking lot. A wrought iron aluminum uh, looking fence with no spikes across the top for the deer would be open and airy so that the residents would not feel confined. It would also enhance the developer's desire for an attractive appearance. After, <clears throat> after the landscaping matures in front of the fence, the fence will eventually uh, won't even be noticed, yet it would be, it would discourage foot traffic from into our community a definite win-win solution for the developers and us as well. Our community hopes you will support this request. Thank you very much. Thank you. Richard Thomas. Okay. And Burke Cuny. Good evening, Madam Chairman, hardworking commission, and grace executives. I passed on a sheet to all of you of just an idea, suggestion regarding the tree area. As this project winds down, our Meadowbrook Association's request for the 130-foot fence on the northern border to prevent foot traffic appears to be unresolved. Regardless of such outcome, it's not sensible that the existing walkway be in the depths of the treed area, which could entice traffic. Moreover, Grace Company on their July 6th meeting stated only two or three patients walk outside every day. Only two or three patients walk outside every day. Older folks dislike bugs, bees, gnats, spiders that would be more prevalent in the current design walkway. Assuming the ordinance would permit the walking path to be located at the very front of the wooded preserve adjacent to the parking lot, it would be one, more accessible to the patients and visitors from either entrance, save the Grace Company from having to cut a pathway amidst the myriad of, of existing trees and foliage at the rear of the treed area preserve and it would save the Grace Company from having to count trees cut in that walkway towards replacement elsewhere, and fourth, beautify the walkway on the west side of it 
the gap between its edge to the parking lot border, notably with stones, mulch, and implanted with low maintenance hostas or annuals. And lastly, less bug exposure to the walkers. Now both, both Grace Company and the city could proclaim they have a dense, uninterrupted, uninterrupted wildlife preserve in this project. If the current walkway ordinance would negate this proposed idea, then this idea is a waste of time as altering the ordinance or accepting the ordinance takes a month of Sundays. Also noting garbage trucks are 21 feet long without the front forks and to lift the bins, the current dumpster site might be hard for them to access, assuming that trash bags are loaded into a carry-all golf cart, there'd be plenty of access to the proposed dumpster site off the preferred plan at the top of the at the bottom of the parking lot. And I thank you all. Thank you. Okay, um, gentlemen, would you you've um, heard public comment and requests, so if you would like to address those questions, I could state them one by one, but I think you've taken notes. We got so, it. Yeah. We know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, first of all, thanks to uh, Meadowbrook Association. The, the, uh, you folks have been great to work with. They've been uh, very pleasant, very uh, good people. We're looking forward to being good neighbors. So uh, we're very happy to concede on uh, number one and number two request of replacement of dwarf Korean lilacs and Adam's cran apples with um, evergreen trees slash plants. That's fine. Uh, the fence, we're, we're really struggling with the fence for a number of reasons. I've never seen a fence that's been aesthetically pleasing. There just isn't going to be one. We don't think this looks good. Uh, secondly, we don't think it, it achieves the goal. And the goal is to keep people from walking from our property onto theirs. What we have proposed on that southern line presently is vegetation and trees. So I think from the sidewalk on Walton, looking back through our parking lot, they're going to see a wall of greenery that does not need to be uh, augmented by a fence. I think that that in and of itself will deter perhaps the inclination to go walk through a parking lot full of cars over a nature trail and through trees and through more lawn to get into the Meadowbrook area. This originally started out as an initiative to keep the people out of uh, the church parking lot cutting across into Meadowbrook, and we satisfied their request with the dense trees in that area on the corner. So to us, this is a little bit too much. We don't like it aesthetically, and uh, from the beginning of time, two out of three ain't bad. So that's our thought. Uh, the first two, uh, Scott, it would have to be an ordinance change because the crab apple tree, right? I believe probably the Planning Commission can approve the landscaping plan as it is, but it does, those are part of the required trees for the buffering, I believe, and that may require a special note in the approval, if so. Correct. So those would be part of the ornamental tree requirements, but if the Planning Commission chooses, you can accept evergreens in lieu of the ornamental trees. Okay, so you are willing to... Repra replace the dwarf Korean lilacs and the Adams crab apples with Correct. evergreens. Yep. Yes. Okay. I don't, I personally don't have a problem with that. I think it's a good suggestion because the lilacs would be barren for so many months out of mm -hmm. the year. Um, and I would still have to agree with you, gentlemen, in regard to the wrought iron fence. I think you've done a very good job with the landscaping and adding landscaping in places that um, probably needed a little bit more. So, so you've done your job. Um, I, don't, I don't feel the wrought iron fence is necessary. Um, and I'm happy with the changes you made in moving the dumpster. Um, I, I think the site's a little done, so I, I guess I should make that comment. I'm glad you've made all these changes because it really was concerning to me that you felt you didn't have a place to move that dumpster. And when you're that tight and you're 15 to 20 feet away from residential, 
with your dumpster and you're saying you don't have enough, you don't want to give up, you know, the extra few spaces for parking, you did find a spot. So this all works. Um, even in regard to a sidewalk around the establishment, you're tight. So you just don't have the room for it. And maybe in this situation with assisted living, depending on your clients, maybe a lot of them wouldn't be able to take advantage of that. But I think too, you have to consider um, oftentimes family will come and take their parents or whoever might be there in a wheelchair. I know my mom was in assisted living. It was a bigger facility. They did have a sidewalk completely around their facility. And in nice weather, that's what I used to do. I walk the sidewalk from front to all around the building and bring her back. Gave us time, her time to talk, me time to talk to her and enjoy the nice weather instead of just sitting on a bench, you know, one spot. Um, it would have been nice to have the sidewalk. I, I'm not going to object to that. The dumpster is moved, so I would have had a strong object, objection to the dumpster not being moved. And like I said, I'm happy with the way you've worked with neighbors and with the changes you have made. Thank you. So thank you, Ms. Neubauer. Welcome back, and thank you for making the changes that we had requested and spoke about. Um, I also want to thank the residents for their cooperation with Grace Centers. I think it's good that we came back with, it looks like only three issues, um, two of which have already been resolved. So it looks like the only outstanding issue is um, the fence. I do want to say that I had an opportunity to drive to your other location. Um, it's lovely, it's quiet, it's beautiful, and I think it's going to be a good addition to Rochester Hills. Rochester Hills. <laughs> Rochester Hills. So um, I think it's important that we have this kind of um, uh, facility in this area. Um, we have an aging community. Unfortunately, a lot of them are being neglected and forced into lower grade facilities, which is um, very concerning to me. As I stated um, with the work I do, it's good to see um, good. Um, I guess my question would be, you know, and maybe this would be um, something to alleviate the concerns of the residents, is how tall, and I may be in the plans and I missed it, but how tall are the trees that are going to be planted in the area that they're asking for the fence? Um, that is a very good question. I know that the ordinance requires a 10 foot tall evergreen. Okay. Um, however, the ones that were not required by ordinance, we went with eight foot tall ones, which still should give plenty of height there to help and how much dense. space is going to be in between the eight to 10 foot trees? They're roughly 10 foot on center, I believe is how they're positioned. Okay, maybe somebody else can answer. Does that provide, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not the architect, you know, our flower person is, our greenery person <laughs> is not here. Uh, yeah. one, one question, the, the, when we met with <laughs> Pam and the board, it, it's the corner coming through the church and I think uh, John said, the arborvitaes in that area um, was the, the best solution, offset arborvitaes. Yes, that was mentioned last time, but I just want to make sure. So uh, what I'm basically saying is eight foot to 10 foot arborvitaes that are offset would create a greater barrier than a fence if that's the height they're being planted at initially and mm -hmm. they will continue to grow. So if the trees, like I stated last time, in this field, in this area, I understand that you do not want to create an environment. I will tell you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you said 80% of the residents here are going to be under POA or guardianship. At least. That means they were placed there against their will and taken out of their homes against their will. And a lot of times these people are placed in these facilities against their will you know, without them even knowing, taken from their home on a 24 hour notice. I am very against offense. So I think that if trees are being planted higher than the fence requirement and spaced out in a way where they were grow, I think that's a very good thing. Um, I do want to tell you 
that we are notorious in Rochester Hills for woodpecker issues. So I'm asking what percentage is cedar shaker and what percentage is vinyl for the part that you have updated? <laughs> Didn't um, expect that one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, here's the thing. A bunch of us have already replaced all of oh, okay. our... Okay, yeah, there's no... It's all cement-based. Okay. So there's no natural wood. It's a, a cement-based. Okay, very good. Um, that's all I have. I hope the residents... Um, are able to understand our position. We are very grateful that you are vocal and felt comfortable enough to present your concerns to us. But, um, you know, we have to advocate sometimes. It's not necessarily advocating for the business, it's advocating for the people who are going to be in there. So that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Struzik. Thank you, Chairperson Bradovic. I um, want to reiterate some of my comments from the previous meeting that I feel this type of housing is very important to have in the city and it's going to serve a lot of existing residents and perhaps uh, future Rochester Hills residents um, if it's approved and built. Um, I've seen a lot of good compromises from the developer in this plan. Um, Meadowbrook, the neighbor, uh, the condos, they're a nice, quiet, and private community. I had an opportunity to tour through their community and see firsthand all of their concerns. Um, the additional landscaping will provide a natural barrier for the existing residents. Um, right now, the existing natural features are, uh, I, I didn't want to walk through them. So um, <laughs> I, I can understand the concern that they have a, a current landscape that is uh, not very welcoming for people to travel through. Um, I, some of the compromises we've seen help to better address that. Uh, moving at the dumpster, um, that was an, an important, very huge win uh, with how close that would have been to some of the existing residents. Um, and I'm glad that the residents and developer are going to be proactive about documenting the condition of the existing retaining wall to make sure that if there are any construction activities uh, that cause any damage to it, that they'll be made whole. Uh, I want to thank the Meadowbrook residents and, and other residents that may have shown up for being so thoughtful and respectful. I know that it can be uh, a thing that we're very passionate about where we live, and their feedback has helped make this uh, a better proposal. And if we do have a motion for approval, I would like the first two items that Ms. Long identified, the dwarf Korean lilacs and the Adam crab apples, to um, further be a condition to change that over to evergreen trees. That's all I had, Chairperson Bernabek. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Boyer. Thank you, Chairperson Bernabek. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to the residents and to the Grace Senior Living. To, you guys were able to talk together, communicate well, come up with some um, agreements to make it better living for both of you. We really appreciate that when that happens in the city. Um, I think it's a great idea that you're taking out the lilacs and the crab apples and putting in the evergreens. I mean, that'll just give that more of a barrier so that they don't have to just look at the building. Um, even though it's a beautiful building, and I, I wouldn't mind looking at it if it's going to be landscaped the same way your other one was. This looks like it's beautiful with the colors, and the, the colors of the building is very nice. Um, and I think with the, the crab apple trees, we're on the south side, and so getting rid of those and moving them to the evergreens with the trees that are already there, that that will give you more of a um, kind of a continuous, maybe not a fence, but a, a can, sort of a continuous area that it'll be hard for people to want to come walking through. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much for coming into the city and bringing your business and thank you to the residents for bringing your concerns and for working out with the business how to make it more livable for both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Kalsunas. Thank you, Chairperson Bernabek. Uh, quick question. The sidewalk, the walkway, what determined where the walkway was going? Why is the walkway there? Why can't it be anywhere else? I'm sorry. The, the nature path, that, that portion. Yes. Um, well, because that is a natural area, 
that was dictated? You mean within that area or on that part of the yeah, site? Why, why is it put there within that area? Um, I worked around existing trees that were there to try and make one that would finagle its way through there. Uh, we do have a retaining wall that's right at the off the south side of that parking lot. Um, there's quite a significant grade change there as you're going into the hill there. Um, that's really how that was configured and laid out was to work around the existing trees that we were trying to preserve there and provide a, a pathway that would meander through those woods. Second question, we talked about the evergreen trees and eight foot tall, I wanna make sure that we do have a wall of ever, evergreen trees. So an eight foot tall tree, 10 feet apart has, because our plant expert's not here. Um, what's our diameter of trees? Um, I couldn't get it from Google right away. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> no, that's where I would go, but there are going to be, there's room for the trees to grow. Um, if we get them too close together, then it's, they're, it's going to have a hard time growing. Um, that was one of the things that the landscape architect, when he initially did it, we had talked about having plants that were five feet off center. He says, those trees, are, you can't put an eight foot, they're, they're too close together. Um, there will be not a solid visual wall at first. It'll take probably a few years for those trees to grow into each other. Um, there'll be a few feet between them, I would imagine. An eight foot tall pine tree, I would think, has a four or five foot diameter radius to it. I would speculate I'm not a landscaper by any means, but um, one of the important things to note is we did position them on the curves primarily so that that's where headlights, when they're heading straight back, they're not going to be moving. But as, as a car, if, if, if the car was to go through there at night with headlights on, it would be that headlight motion going through there. So we've got them uh, positioned so that we had them staggered on the north side there where that first curve is to try and avoid uh, headlights from being able to get through or cause significant light from headlights encroaching off the site. So in regards to sort of, I'll say filling the gaps, is there a way that we can maybe sneak some arborvitaes in there initially in between, in between the evergreen trees just to close the wall? So this, the parking on the back side is going to be overflow. So at night, there's almost nobody there but the care staff. So they're going to be just pulling in and going into the parking lot. So there's not going to be as much headlight traffic as people think. It's going to be very limited. I'm not worried about headlamps, really. It's just more of people walking through to keep them out of the area behind you. That, it's, it's the area... Um, on the east side in the kind of the corner of the parking lot where the trees are in that corner um, they come over from the church which is on the east side of the parking lot into their development so they they need that corner blocked off and if I mean I am totally willing the landscaper I've played baseball with when I was in sixth grade so I've known the guy forever if we need to put a couple extra arborvitaes around and you guys are out there when he's out there we will block it off. I mean, I am. I know exactly where she wants them, okay. um, Mrs. Long. So, I mean, we, we will do that. We don't want to walk it through our lot either, to be honest with you. And, and I appreciate it because a lot of developers come in front of us with an evergreen plan. And when I show up at the property to check out what we approved, <laughs> there's gaps. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, no. Because I, I, I want to make sure, I, either, I use the development of um, the Walgreens as my example that I see every day that I drive by it on Crooks and South Boulevard. That's not yours, is it? Uh, Crooks and Auburn is. Crooks and Auburn. Yeah, that is yours. That's right, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. No, I'm not buying a lottery ticket. Today. Mr. Kalsunas, Ms. Rodiger would like. Yes. I just wanted to add, I mean, our landscape ordinance provides spacing for the healthy long-term growth of these species. And so if you cram them in the beginning because you want some instant screening. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah, I understand. And so I, I want to be careful of what we're trying to achieve here. And so we don't want, I know that your, I know your beef is with the, the shrubs outside of Walgreens. Um, but this is, you know, a different animal. And if we're replacing lilac trees and crab apples with evergreens, those take up more space. And so we need to have some spacing, otherwise they're all going to die. And so, so no one wants that. So with that, I know that you're the expert with this. 
the motion that I'm proposing going forward with, I think we could all agree on this, is that the applic applicant submit a plan for staff approval. Right, I just, um, I don't, I just want you to understand there won't be a, a solid wall on day one. Like it has to have some space to grow, otherwise they will die. I'm sure you could, ha we'll have a reasonable approach based upon the experts that we have. I think we could all agree on that. Because we don't want them to die. Because then we'll have less screening. So I, for the record, I think we all understand that. But that the applicant, applicant submit a plan for staff approval of the deciduous trees uh, on the border. You mean evergreen trees? The ever, replace the, sorry, I have missed words. Re, to replace, for staff approval, to replace the deciduous trees on the border with evergreen trees and arborvitaes in between the evergreen trees to improve screening. Could, could it look good? I don't think it'll look good, and I'm not sure it accomplishes what you want. So that, that southern line there is what you're worried about, right? The very yes. southern line? Okay, yeah. so if you are on the sidewalk at Walton, here's what you're doing. You're looking through trees between Walton Boulevard and our parking lot. You're looking through a parking lot. You're looking to a detention wall, which is up in the air. And, and going south of that, you've got existing trees that you're now going to look through. And then you're finally going to see the sight line of the proposed plannings that we have. I really don't think you're gonna need gap trees. That's, that's a lot to be able to decipher if you're contemplating going through all these things to get into the Meadowbrook. My biggest issue is where your walkway is. If there is a gap tree, it'll, it'll, there's really no space to put that on your property. But the that's walkway the is for our issue. residents. It's not for trespassers. And that's really, I think, unless I'm mistaken, that's what we're trying to address, right? I understand, but I could also go walk on it if I parked in your parking lot, too. You could. Mm. We'd probably call the police if we saw you. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Pro after this, you probably would. <laughs> Excuse me, we d we're, please don't yell out comments. I'm sorry. So, okay. Thank you. So I'll put this for staff approvals and then, um, Okay. Okay, so, are you finished? Yes. Yeah, when it pleases the chair, I'm ready for a motion. Okay, we have, um, right after Mr. Hooper speaks. Sure. Okay. Mr. Hooper. Thank you. Um, yeah, I appreciate everything you've done, uh, just all the comments, especially appreciate the uh, revised elevations on the side of the buildings. Uh, this new bar and I were talking last, last week about uh, our last meeting regarding those enhancements to that. I think you've done that. looks <coughs> made an excellent change, I believe, in my opinion. And enhanced the beauty of the, of the overall project, I think, for sure. Uh, in regards to the screening, you know, our, our, we have our own ordinance, our own screening ordinance, that we don't purposely uh, stack them close like that. And the screening is to provide, I think it's over a three or four year period of time before they, they fill it in. So on purpose, our, our own ordinance says we don't do this. Mm -hmm. um, so hey, I would agree that, that replace the, you've already agreed to replace the number of trees the, that are in the ordinance with an evergreen tree, and, and that's fine. Well, one for one change, mm -hmm. and then space them appropriately to, to fit with the existing foliage that's out there right now, and, um, and achieve a more uh, non-deciduous, carnivorous appearance mm -hmm. than what the residents want. So I, I support that along with all the other comments. And with that, I make the motion in the packet for the tree removal permit as per the plan with the following two findings and two conditions. Okay. Uh, support. Okay. Um, I also would like to thank residents for coming to express your opinion and the developers so working working so well with your neighbors and I think there was a really good compromise and um, so I appreciate that we always recommend everyone work together and it usually has a much better result okay so I do have a motion by Mr. Hooper and seconded by Mr. Kalsunas that the Planning Commission grants a tree removal permit for Grace Senior Living. Is there any discussion on the motion? Take a voice vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes unanimously. 
I still have the floor. Hmm? I still have the floor, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. With, uh, with that, I'd like to make the motion in the uh, packet for the site plan approval with the following four pre-printed findings and three pre-printed conditions and add the fourth condition as discussed tonight of replacing the uh, dwarf Korean lilacs and Adam crab apples with appropriate or equal number of uh, carnivorous trees as approved by staff. And along with the discussion, you've also stated that if you go out there and you find additional areas that you feel that are necessary to add additional coniferous trees, you're willing to do that to, uh, to further uh, discourage cut through traffic if there may be any from adjacent properties or from Walton Boulevard uh, through your property. Support. Thank you. So we are not going to gear into the suggested numbers. Um, there were suggested numbers of 10 evergreens for the dwarf Korean lilacs and three for the Adams crab apples. So we're just going to. One for one. one, for one. OK. One for one, and it's proved by staff. If there's additional things, the staff can review it and add some as well as the developers already agreed to uh, add additional. Like if the 10 Korean lilacs if you only need eight evergreens because the evergreens are larger, whatever the staff says to right. replace, will replace. It's reviewed and approved by staff, right? Okay. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Hooper, seconded by Mr. Kalsunas, that the Planning Commission approves the site plan for Grace Senior Living based on plans stated and received by the Planning Department on July 8th, 2021. Is there any discussion on the motion? Take a voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. 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 Thank you very much. We won't let you down. No. Thank you for your investment, Rochester yes, yes, Hills, Thank too. you. Yes. Thank you. All set. We hope, we hope the uh, pandemic's done and then you can come to our grand opening. Look forward to it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. on to discussion. We have the zoning issue discussion on murals. So do I don't see, uh, I don't see, I mean our Eric and Jill, oh, okay, I see. Didn't realize that, they're up on Zoom. Okay. Nope, we can't hear you. Ms. Kapolanski, did you want to um, do a brief report since we're waiting for? Um, we were going to have Eric do that, but I can kind of kick it off. Okay. So while we're fixing the audio for that, um, staff has been contemplating over the last year or so, really since the Auburn Road corridor um, got underway with construction and things, how we could accomplish the idea of adding murals or allowing murals in the community. Um, and we asked our consultant, Giffels Webster, to begin to look at that. So what you see before you this evening is a very preliminary idea of um, one way we might go about this. And it, it includes having murals come before the Planning Commission as part of a site plan review. Um, and as part of that review, uh, you would look at those murals. We would, of course, make sure they're um, tasteful. It would be a good way to put it. So we wouldn't want any obscene things or anything like that in there. Um, but obviously there's some license for some artistic things with colors and, and different things like that. 
So what you have before you is just a very preliminary discussion. We still have some work to do with the city attorney to make sure that the way this is written up um, works with all the different regulations and laws that could apply to this. But we were just trying to think of an, a novel way to allow murals within the community and I'm, I'm hoping Eric has a little bit more to add once we get his audio, but that's just a very brief introduction. you. I, I think my major concern with what I've read so far is the statement, in no event will an original art mural permit be granted or denied based upon the content of the mural, which to me that means it opens the door to any image. It's artistic expression, but this really could open the door to basically anything and everything. And I guess I wouldn't want to consider murals within the community without having some oversight on them with some planning commission review, city council review. I do think we should have the photo and have um, a review process on it to just say that whatever is submitted, I mean, you're going to look at the architecture, the building, et cetera, et cetera, and not actually have um, like I said, some oversight on the content. I Because I can think of a lot of positive things, but I can think of a lot of things I wouldn't want to see on a wall in a mural, the political images marijuana plant, a nude. I mean, there are a variety of things. And I actually didn't notice anything that had a limit as to how many buildings are permitted to have murals in any given area, whether it would be a block area or a, a mile area. As far as it being, being encouraged more in the Brooklyn's area, I really like the new Auburn door, new Auburn Road corridor right now, but I think right now, with everything that's going on, it's pretty busy right now. It's a small eight-block area that's narrow anyway. 
there is ornamental landscaping that covers the entire median, a lot of standing art, a uh, large piece for each street name in the median, art in the center of the roundabouts, as well as painted street art in the parking areas from the K-12 art contrast, which I think was absolutely awesome. I mean, we have orma ornamental plantings, the sidewalks, et cetera. Um, and like I said, it's only an eight block narrowly built area. And I think we're at risk of overdoing a good thing and spoiling the original intention. Um, we have our first three story development that will be starting soon. And the vision is to develop more. And I don't think 30 foot painted murals on buildings with no limit on the number or oversight on the content of the mural is a perk. Um, not only in this area, but any area of the city. So I think those are my major concern and very ma major concern is not having a review process on the actual mural itself. I guess I want to understand that. So in the application requirements, it said you need a color rendering of the proposed mural. So you will have a visual of what it would look like. But it's also saying that no permit would be, it's also saying in no event will an original art mural permit be granted or denied based on the content of the mural. So you can show me what they are proposing. That's great, but if, if we have an objection or we're concerned about the image, we don't, this basically is telling me we don't have a lot to say. I mean, it doesn't look to me like we have the ability to approve or disapprove the content of the mural. Well, that would be what the standards of approval are in number seven. I'm just checking, Eric, I'm assuming you still can't communicate, you can't, no, okay. Yeah, the intent was, like I said, just like any facade, that they have to show you what it's going to look like, and that would be part of your consideration in terms of um, if it's appropriate for the location being proposed and, and things of that nature. And that's where I said this is a touchy topic that in terms of, like you, you talked about, you know, nudes or, you know, things of that nature. You know, what is art? What is freedom of speech? What is a sign? Um, those are all questions, right? And these are things that are commonly done in a lot of communities. Um, and it's usually a board that oversees it. A DDA typically is, is the board that sees them. Um, we obviously don't have a DDA uh, for Rochester Hills. Um, that's why we thought the Planning Commission um, would be the most appropriate board that would be the, the board that would oversee it. So you are saying that there would be an approval process because I saw... Correct. through the, It would be a site plan review process through, uh, to the Planning Commission. Okay, so then how does that work together with the statement that's in here that the murals. Where are you seeing that again? So I think the area that you're referring to, um, Chairperson Bernabek, it yes. does say that the it should not be uh, disapproved or not approved based on the content. And I just flipped over to the agenda so I don't have the exact language. And I think one of the issues that we're running into here and that we have to further evaluate with Giffels Webster and with um, John Starin is the idea of free speech and how signs are regulated and getting into some of those types of things. Um, I think what we're looking for now is maybe not specific critiques about the exact language in here, but what, how the Planning Commission feels about having murals brought to you and having a vehicle through site plan review for applicants to get those murals approved. Yes, I do understand that, but with the statement in there, that really was, that's what I said, it's, that was my major concern because you're saying there is a review process, but with the statement in there, and I'm trying to look at, all right, I it's did here. have it somewhere. It's seven, it's at the end of seven, I see it. So, but again. Can we just drop okay. that sentence? We might be able to, but I think that's something we probably have to talk more with the city attorney about. Mm -hmm. right, but again, we wanted to, I guess, kind of back to your or other comments about, you know, should we limit the number or the size or the area? Right. Um, again, we, we view this as, you know, the Brooklyn's area in particular, obviously we've had a huge investment. We're, create, we're really creating a 
a very unique place, and murals help to do that. And they're more and more common in these walkable areas that we're creating. Um, you look, you know, downtown Lake Orion, downtown Rochester, I mean, all around Metro Detroit, a lot of these areas have these. Um, and there's, we've had some requests in the past, we've had to turn them down. We didn't want to turn them down. We think they add to, like said, the uniqueness of a place. Um, so we're, like I said, kind of managing that fine line. And like I said, other communities that do it traditionally have a more, um, like I said, a DDA or another body or an art commission. Uh, we don't have an art commission here at the city. That's something we could look at in the future. But in the meantime, um, we didn't want to stifle um, the good thing that's been, we've started, essentially. Right, but like you said, there's no limitation. I, my concern is with it being an eight black arrow, I mean, an eight black area right now, and to put, with everything I already stated, I've got concerns about, because there is no limit, I, is that every building, every other building, we're gonna have three story buildings. I really do think you run a risk of overdoing something um, the original intention. I think you can spoil the original intention. And I'm not saying that if one went in, I would have an objection to that, but there are no limits and I would not want to see that eight block area covered with murals. But as I stated, my biggest concern was the statement that there was no oversight, there was no, it, it gave me the impression that I mean, well, it's plain and simple. In no event will an original art mural permit be granted or denied based upon the content of the mural. And so you're saying there's a review process, but that statement's in there. We'll move on beyond that. We'll look at that sentence overall, though. Right. Well, that, that was my point and why I went into what I did was that statement. So actually, I don't have anything else right now. So... Mr. Detloff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm a huge proponent of stuff like this. I think this is, you know, this is great. Any kind of art that can be incorporated into a city, I think it just gives it more of a sense of place. Um, and, um, and obviously, you know, there, there has to be guidelines here. Uh, and reading, you know, and reading through this proposed, uh, um, you know, ordinance, um, you know, I think there's definitely things that need to be t uh, tweaked. But as Deb mentioned, and then Sarah, you've mentioned too, you know, the oversight I think is extremely important. Um, I personally, we, you know, would like to see some kind of design committee, um, uh, you know, put together, uh, maybe a member of the planning commission, uh, a member of uh, city council, uh, somebody from the planning department, maybe another department, where these things would come to, you know, uh, you know, initially, and then you know, gather comments and uh, suggestions from from that initial meeting before any recommendation would be made, or before it becomes, you know, just coming right to the planning commission. And that um, we've got a lot of experience with these kinds of things. I would certainly volunteer to be part of that effort if that's if that does go forward. But I like this idea, and obviously, you know, it it. it there's, um, it can get, I've seen areas where it, it, it's gotten a little bit out of control from the stand, it's too much. But again, that's where I think the design committee and, and that can kind of like be a guiding light and you know, to something like that. So I, I really like this idea and I, I would support it, um, obviously with, with some tweaking of, of the language in that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kalsunas. Thank you, Chairperson Brunabic. I guess I love going to big cities and seeing murals. I love them on the side of the building. The bigger, the better. The more busier or eye-popping, the better. In Montreal, if you go through Montreal, they had a program where a lot of people were painting over the walls with graffiti. So they actually went through and they put murals all over these buildings and they took off. And no more graffiti, because people respect the work that was done. And I like going through the different cities and seeing the murals. My issue, and I guess I'll just I'll say the elephant in the room is the ones that are political in nature. I think we are at one, this day at one of the most decisive moments that I've seen in history. 
where if some if someone wants to paint an American flag on the side of the building, I'm sure you'll get people in here complaining about it. And an American flag's not political, but it's it's a it's a it's it's some people, from what I've seen on the news and this and that, take offense to that. And that's what one thing I don't want to do. I don't want to turn this council, this commission into a political organization where we're deciding on something because of free speech. And truthfully, if that's something that we can't come up with a happy medium on, I don't want murals. Because now's not the time. But I think maybe down the road, maybe. But I don't want this to become a political situation because of some kind of cause or something like this and then half the people are here and we got full of cameras and we got another oil drilling situation for like we had in those days where the room was full of press and everybody. So that's my two cents is if we can't handle the political in nature and, and maybe that's sort of like a surround, harmonious to your background type thing, I don't think we're ready for it. And maintenance schedule is the other item I want to talk about. Um, who is the one that determines when something is poorly maintained? Because I got that from here. It's there's maintenance kept in good condition over its life. Display should be kept clean, neatly painted. Any mural not maintained, fade or disrepair shall be ordered removed. You know, when is a mural judged? for its condition and maintenance? Do we wait every five years, every two years, every three years? I, I don't know, depending on what kind of paints that are used. And then you gotta get an artist that says, well, it's made to sort of fade because then it shows something different, or I don't know. I have this rule, I never trust an artist because of bad experiences in the past of, of my church, but that's another story. I mean, um, it, would be, it would be overseen just like any other code enforcement, you know, signs and, you know. Yeah. And then those things need to be laid out. But yeah, that's it. It's just, I think that's what everybody is saying is that how do we address political and nature type things that I really don't, I don't want the city to become decisive, divisive. I don't. And if Muralis is going to do that because the different ways that we write it, then I don't think we're ready for them this time, maybe later. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Boyer. Thank you, Chairperson Bernamic. And I totally agree with um, what uh, Chairperson Bernamic said about, you know, once you're saying that in no event can you deny it, well, because of freedom of speech, you can't deny it. So um, as uh, Mr. Kalsuna said, right, th this is gonna become a very decisive. Who thinks it's art? Well, wait till you see the mural I'm gonna paint on my garage door, right? Yeah. And my neighbors are gonna hate it, whatever it is. So I think you're, you're you know, it, it's a, maybe you fall it into the signs and it falls right in with the sign ordinances that we're doing with signs. It's going to be hard to say when something is tasteful and, you know, fits in with a restaurant for outdoor seating and it looks great, or is it a statement on the side of the building? And like you said, then we're into that, you know, who's deciding what's, what should be art? Are we deciding what's part of a sign ordinance? So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for staying away from the murals, but that's just a personal, personal thought on that. Thank you. Ms. Neubauer. Thank you, Chairperson Bernabek. I have to agree with my fellow commissioners, and I think the city attorney would have a huge um, uphill battle when it came to this, because language in here already says things like artistic expression, but then uses words like content neutral. And those things, I believe, are never, they do not equal each other. You can't have them in the same way. and. If you allow something like this, you know, every city is subject to the state, every state is subject to the federal government, and ultimately freedom of expression will always win. So we will never actually have the ability to regulate or deny anything. Um, and even def it, you would have to have something in here to define every single thing, including content neutral. So how are you going to be able to define contract, contract content neutral when you have this same language that says artistic expression. It's just completely contrary, contradictory to each other. I think it's going to open up huge can of worms for the commission. I don't think we'll ever be able to make 
a decision that represents our community well. Um, I know that downtown Rochester, Detroit, Lake Orion, other communities do have these um, things allowed. We are not that those communities were a different population. Um, even as many times as I've messed up and said Rochester versus Rochester Hills. I mean, Rochester is a completely different group of people um, with different um, um, interests. You know, we don't have a huge downtown. A lot of our residents go down there to visit, but a lot of them choose to stay in Rochester Hills because they don't want a huge downtown with that kind of um, work. I love art. I'm not saying we should suppress art in our community. I just don't think murals is a proper expression for it. I don't think the city attorney, as gifted as they may be, would be able to properly identify and define um, to give us guidance to make proper decisions. And again, no matter what definitions they put into it, you can never have freedom of expression and artistic expression and um, our free speech balance out with content neutral. There's nothing, nothing is neutral anymore. Just like Nick said, even the American flag is not neutral. Um, so I just, I'm against it. I think it's a battle for us that none of us are going to be able to fight, frankly, because there's not, there's not the language. The language right now does not exist for, for to give us enough structure to make any kind of decision on anything that would be proposed to us. It's, it's unfortunate, but I just think that's the reality of the times that we're in. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hooper. Thank you again, Chair Kursupernovic. Uh, I guess um, I'm interested in it, um, but it's it's the uh, devil in the details. What I think is nice looking mural. Someone else think, doesn't think it's, that's a terrible mural. You know, likewise, I can think it's a terrible mural. And I think it's a great looking mural. And I, I I'm not sure how to that ever gets policed along with what Ms. Newbar is saying. But uh, you allow one. One, you allow one and you allow, you allow everybody in, I guess. Uh, so, but, uh, I guess this is limited to the large scale areas, blocks of a building like that. Um, you know, this is not uh, like uh, Dr. Bauer saying, this is not gonna be on garage doors, is it? I mean, uh, like so as proposed right now, it could be in just certain districts. It it doesn't have to be just Brooklyn's. I know when KLM building came, um, they wanted to have a mural on the side of their building, and unfortunately we couldn't allow them because it was gonna be facing, you know, Rochester Road. So we could define right. certain districts, I mean, but I, it would not be residential. Okay, so, so, that, so that would be part of the ordinance would be not allowed in residential district or something like that along those lines. Mm -hmm. And I could, besides getting into the, our uh, deed ordinances of our subdivision, you know, I'm suing my neighbors because he puts something on his garage door and I don't like it and I'm gonna put something on my garage door I'm gonna one up them you know and you know, you know I just boy I don't want to go down that path but, um, so and then also uh, reading in here two couple of just things I guess to, to consider is it is there a two-year limit on this it says it's uh it's two year just to uh, that the, the mural should exist for two years and then was removed or it's no longer in, in place or, or what? Right, that was as proposed. There was a, a discussion about a, a time frame for how long it could be up. This is, again, just some sample language. Okay. That might not be a bad idea. Two year limit, you gotta put up with two years and then, uh, you know, you just don't renew the permit and ah, that, that thing's gotta come down. You know, maybe that's a way to suffice if the content's terrible or something like that. You know, live with it for two years. Sorry, who's going to decide if the contact is, content is terrible? Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I, yeah. But here, if you, you, you got a two-year limit, it's coming down anyhow. So it, whether you love it or hate it, I guess it's... Suck it up for two years, no matter two what. Two years, it's, it's coming down, you know, yeah. no matter what. I don't know. Um, maybe that's a compromise position. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. The other things I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see is... Uh, you know, soliciting money and stuff like that on a mural that's kind of woven into this mural. We've got to, I don't know if there's limits on how we can, how we can, you know, not put that in there. And then are we going to allow these uh, artists to sign their names to it, you know, and start profiting off of uh, murals? You know, I, yeah, I'm sure there's a, 
some people in New York have put quite a name on their murals. Um, and you know, I can see where you're not, someone's not, can't be paid to put a mural up. Um, but then again, if they, uh, someone uh, sees a way they can make a dollar off this, you know, I wouldn't let that. Whatever the language state for that. Yeah, that's just initial thoughts. Don't want to rule it out because I'm open ended to see what the, where it goes. You know, but, uh, devil's in the details. Thank you. And Mr. Struzak. Thank you, Chairperson Bernavik. I would love to see art murals in the city in appropriate places. I work in Detroit, and there are a lot of art murals that I've seen um, in my travels there, and th there's quite a few that I love seeing, um, including I, I work in a 15-story building, and we, for a couple of years, we had a very large art mural on the, the side of it where the ele elevator shafts were, so it was just dead space, and it was turned into a, a pretty neat-looking art mural. Um, However, there, there's also a lot of art that I wouldn't want my family to be exposed to while we're walking down the sidewalk. So for example, I, my family, we frequently bike and walk through the Brooklyn's district um, with the wonderful job that we've done. And if we have no ability to, to regulate at all uh, what goes on the side, uh, in terms of content, then I would worry about w what my nine and eleven year old are going to be exposed to um, you know that that is considered uh, art uh, and then my other concern is uh, I really th there's I feel there's a good chance that we might at some point have somebody that wants to put some divisive speech to um, promote whatever it is there they're thinking um, and I would rather not see any divisive artwork in the neighborhood I'd rather see things that bring us together instead of things that that tear us apart so um, with with no review process we'd be relying on the applicants uh, having good intentions um, so Perhaps we can go back to the to our legal staff and figure out exactly what controls that we would have, and if the answer is is what that sentence said that Ms. Bernabek pointed out is that we have no controls over content, um, that would be a, a very important thing to to have clarified. And if we do have some kind of controls, I'd like to know what they are and what they look like. Um, so I, I hope that we can have more discussion about this because this is something that I'm interested in and I think that there is perhaps uh, an opportunity to add some pretty awesome things to the city. Thank you, Chairperson Bernabe. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we have Eric tried calling back in. Eric, is that you on the phone? Can you hear me? I think oh. I heard something. Can you speak up? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hold on. Let me put headphones on. Mm -hmm. You're you, still low. You're, you're distant, Early. but you're there. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you speak a little bit louder? Okay. Yeah, I'll try. Sorry. Yeah. Did you hear that conversation? Uh, hopefully you heard most of that conversation on on your Zoom. I, I missed some of it trying to connect going between phone and computer, but um, I got most, you know, the concerns about content. Um, so that, that clause at, at the end of seven in the standards for approval, that is not intended to be a sneaky provision or anything like that um, but it's to protect the city um, from free speech issues so a wall sign for example you would not be looking at the content of, of any wall sign um, there would be more assurance that that would be truly a commercial message um, because of the type of sign it, that it is but um, you can't be judging any sign or any mural based on the, the specific content of the mural, what, what it says or what the image is um, or anything like that. So that's what that's intended to reinforce in your, your main criteria should be those time, place and manner standards. And that again, applies to all signs, not just murals. So um, for any type of sign or any mural, you can 
you can require the period that the sign or mural is displayed. That's the two-year um, item we discussed. You can regulate placement, location, um, how the sign's constructed or fixed um, to buildings, but you can't get into um, denying or approving any any sign or any mural based on on what it says. That's there's a lot of case history um, on this, and there's still some gray areas. But that's that's the intent is to just provide that additional assurance that um, if if there's a desire to allow murals, that you're not um, judging them based on content. Uh, Eric, I do have a question. So based on the, the comments you heard here at the commission, it sounds like many of the concerns relate to um, kind of the worst case, you know, having, um, you know, negative yeah. uh, messages or, or things of that nature. But many, many communities allow for murals, and I'm sure they share all of those same concerns. Um, is there a way that because this is additional, like, bonus, um, like, you know, you're, you're allowing your signs by right, this would be um, something that you'd be allowed in addition to that. Would there a way that we could regulate it via, you know, promoting, you know, the city as the, you know, the preeminent place to live, work, and raise your family, that it had to be consistent with that message or anything along that line that would give the people reviewing it the ability to um, review it based on promoting the city's values or, or things of that nature? So that, that is more of a, the purpose of this ordinance, number one. That, that intends to be more of a broad statement or a catch-all, um, and there's some, some references in there um, to promoting uh, the public interest, increasing the community identity, fostering a sense of place. So um, while there aren't specific standards under one, um, those, those could be cited for approval or denial um, if there's concerns with um, who's installing a sign, how it would be installed. Um, but some of this will be regulated also by the compensation. So that the goal of that is to ensure that if a restaurant or a bar wants a mural, they're putting it up for their purposes to improve the appearance of the district and of their building. Um, they wouldn't be allowed, they, would, they wouldn't allow, um, if there's a concern with a marijuana leaf, you know, a bar, um, what purpose would a bar have to um, you know, have a marijuana leaf mural on the side of the building? It's not really related to that use. Um, what, would, what would the reason for that business owner be to allow that? So if there was compensation involved where, um, say, a, a dispensary in a different um, city wanted advertisement on the side of the building in the Brooklyn's, that compensation provision would prohibit um, a billboard type or an advertisement type sign um, and would be more encouragement for a mural that's related to that business, um, you know, that, that's that the building's um, used for. Okay, so. Um, do, you, I, do you have further questions for Eric before I move in with commissioners again? No, I just I think that this this is why we want to bring this to a discussion item to hear the planning commissioner's concerns and comments. And you know, I, we've heard a lot of comments about control. You know, we don't want to create something that would create problems and political tensions. And so, if we could mm -hmm. draft it in a way that could help prevent that, like I said, I know from an administration standpoint, we've talked about it. And like I said, this is not, we're not reinventing the wheel. Communities do this all over the world, and so we just need to find that right language that gives us the assurance that we're not going to create something that we. Um, are causing more problems than good. Do we have any data from any of the other communities about lawsuits that were rendered against the city for denial of murals or any of the proposals that were on what basis in the other communities they were denied and the outcome? Do we have any data like that? We can look into that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, and I guess nowadays with the political climate, we can't assume that a business owner would necessarily not do something. I do understand your point that a business owner basically would want to serve their own interest, but art is artistic expression, so he may not be, may not request a mural that just totally advertises for his business, it could just be considered artistic expression beauty. 
I, I guess I don't want to make an ex make any assumptions with everything going on nowadays that you know someone wouldn't do this or a business owner wouldn't do that or neighbors will like this or that I, I guess I just don't want any assumption about this so I guess this just needs some yeah some further investigation I think Ms. Neubauer's suggestion was an excellent one. Mr. Kalsunas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm reading through, you know, I'm looking through the murals that are in Montreal, and I see one mural with a, um, a studio. The company is on, on the mural, sort of in the corner. I see Montreal Canadiens world championship thing and I read the compensation portion of it and there's nothing really that says that if I take and I'll pick on progressive insurance if I want to pull my progressive insurance office in one of the buildings there's no reason why I can't put a big mural flow on the side I don't I don't see that of as a commercial I don't see a com murals really should be about an area in the city. It shouldn't be about the business that's there. That's sort of my thoughts on that. So I think that's a little bit what Eric was pointing to in the sense that um, even with signs, we can't look at the content. So a business that has signage allotted that they haven't used could put up any messaging that they want to put up. Um, and, you know, and that's in accordance with free speech provisions. Mm -hmm. So we would have to look at mur murals similarly, and maybe we can explore some other vehicles of how communities are able to get more at the content without violating those regulations. Yeah, because the commercial, we have rules today in the sign ordinance to limit commercial, I'll call it, relays of uh, what you want on a sign. But if I put it flow in a mural, why not? But the progressive is just big on her, her nameplate that meets the rules. So those are little things that to consider. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Neubauer. Okay, so to, cons I'm sorry. I know I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to be like the Debbie Downer, but I'm just my my attorney brain is just on high fi You know, it's an overdrive. I'm just concerned about. I would like data. I would like the following data, if possible, of the surrounding communities, like Rochester, Detroit, Lake Orion, of the of the areas that have murals up. I'd like to know how many of them have been proposed and denied. And of those that have been denied, how many of them have levied a lawsuit against the city? So that's my first thing that I would want to know. The second thing I'd like to know is how can we properly define artistic expression and content neutral? And I know that you're saying that the signage, people can put up signage however they want. The problem is, is that when a business puts up signage and it's contrary to what the community wants, the community goes after the business this will be something that the community can come after the city for. So the, the businesses, you know, they're bearing the brunt. They don't want to do that. They have motivation to do that because they don't want to have to hire attorneys to defend. Um, they'd rather spend their money not on legal fees but on promoting their business in other ways. Um, so I guess I would just have to find out more data and samples, I guess, of I mean, the murals in Ann Arbor or Lansing are completely different than the murals that are in Lake Orion, which are completely different from the ones that are in Detroit. So each one would have to, if it's possible, reflect the values of the community. Values are very subjective. The community is very diverse, which is great. Um, Rochester Hills being very diverse, um, it would be very hard to uh, get a consensus, and for this this group, or any group, frankly, to to do that. Some of the communities um, that were mentioned are less diverse than Rochester Hills. We have lots of different ethnicities, religions, political views, 
um, family types, I just think it would be very burdensome for the committee to deal with that without more data. So that's all I have. Thank you, Chairperson Bernabic. Thank you, Mr. Hooper. Thank you. Um, on Planning Commission, occasionally we come up against uh, applicants that uh, want to do something that isn't strictly defined by the ordinance, and we always rely on the harmonious and compatible. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many times we heard that? And then Stearns even said a number of times, "Well, you can always rely on it's not harmonious and compatible." Well, what does that mean? You know, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so it's some kind of similar path we're going down here. We're going to need some kind of language in there, and that leaves broad discretion to the planning commission that to say, "Well, it's not harmonious and compatible," you know, and it, it be able to defend that. So if, if there's something like that out there. I was trying to find a good de definition here, um, you know, other than uh, Mayor Barnett's political uh, slogan. But uh, <laughs> uh, but murals have the opportunity to tell the community story, create a unique experience, engage citizens, increase foot traffic and tourism, increase appreciation for the arts and artists, and increase overall attractiveness of the space. You know, maybe that along with our harmonious compatible, you know, loose language, something like that, they could be defensible, you know, so my thoughts. Thank you. It's interesting because we actually do have a mural in the city right now. I don't know if you guys think of it, but it's on the back of Rochester University. They have along the Paint Creek Trail. There's a mural along that back wall. And that was allowed because in our ordinance, right now, sign murals would be considered a sign. And so... Um, signs are defined by something that's visible from a street so the fact that you can't see that from from any road allowed it to be kind of a loophole from the sign ordinance so that's an interesting thing right like would anyone not want the mural at rochester you know, you know what i mean so there are good cases of where you want murals is how we can come up with language that um, addresses the concerns and so in my planning career, I've always been of the mindset is that if there's something the community wants, make it easy, right? Define it, regulate it, but make it easy. Um, you know, don't make it a variance, don't make it, you know, something else. So um, I think these comments are helpful and we hear, you know, we don't want it to become out of control. We want to make sure it's not, you know, divisive. We want to make sure we're covering ourselves from a legal standpoint. John Starin has looked at this. He has some comments that he had, you know, already as well. So. I think Eric um, and Jill and Kristen and myself and John Steering will sit together and, and look at these and gather some more data and hopefully bring back another draft for you that addresses a lot of your concerns and we can see um, your desire to move it forward or not. Just a quick one too. Uh, now they bring this up, a lot of people have flagpoles be included. What stops me from flying any flag I want? Nothing. So I could fly any political speech or any... Uh, Right, many businesses have, you know, like the, the American flag, the, their, you know, the, the Michigan flag, they, their, their country of origin, if they're from, or their, their logo of their company. Sure. Yeah, I mean, so there's no ordinance now, you know. There's a regulation for flags specifically, I think, in the sign ordinance that limits. But it talks about the size of flags, the type of lighting allowed, the height of the pole. It, you could fly any message yes. on right. the flag that you want. I could do whatever I want on my flag, right? You no make a custom me, right? flag. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or well, wouldn't be 30 foot tall, though. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, it's subject to that. But I mean, again, it's a first, that's a free speech in my flag. Mm -hmm. I'll fly my flag. Maybe that's something we have to regulate. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to throw a conference arguments here. Right. So I really could put a mural on my garage door. I mean, it's my house, it's my property. I pay whatever I want mm -hmm. on it. And probably would be all right. Yeah, yeah, my neighbors might right. egg me, but. Yeah, I think, I think that's. I know my son is a deep restrict. <laughs> My, ours, I know it's in our, in our deed that I yeah. Get, yeah. it's got to be a solid color door or something like that. I mean, that's, I know, that's in our deed. Yeah. I think ours is one of those earlier ones. We don't have so much spelled out like that oh, in really? ours because yeah. ours is one of the first ones, like yeah. uh, way back. It was up on the news like that guy who covered his entire house Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for your comments. Like I said, that's, I mean, we know this is, like I said, a contentious potentially topic. Like I said, if it was easy, we would have done it years ago. And it's something that we've been talking about and rolling over for years. And it keeps on going back to, we, get, we keep on getting requests for them. And it's something that, in spirit, we, we just want to support. So we, we want to find a way to regulate it. So thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. It's good to hear from everyone. Yeah, sorry about that. 
hopefully next okay, time we we'll can see. We'll see you in person next month. All right, thank you. Well, hopefully next time we can see you and hear you together. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm going to move on to any other business. Actually, Krista and I do have one thing. Okay. Um, if you'd like, if the Planning Commission will. Um, do you want to pull up my screen, Sarah? Yes. Um, so Krista and I had um, a phone call or a meeting the other day. Um, many of you in the Planning Commission will recall, um, we, a couple years back, had a PUD proposed for um, what I'll call the greenhouse site oh, yeah, yeah. on Crooks Road, just north of Auburn, where Kristen's cursor is. Um, there's a greenhouse site, and then there's two homes. No, actually, there's a total of three homes um, that all, all kind of go below that big white roof you see at the north at the top end of the screen it's about four acres in total that property um, there is some wetlands on the rear they total under an acre maybe quarter I think it's at least a half acre probably a little bit more um, but we keep on getting requests for it and if the Planning Commission may recall we had a PUD that had um, originally it was a hotel and some retail and office we the Planning Commission wasn't in favor of that they came back and proposed some townhomes with some retail out front um, which was more favorable, um, but the, the deal ended up not happening and it continues to sit. And that was, I think, four or five years ago. Um, we were getting increased questions about what they can do with this property. As you may recall, the property is zoned and planned for office. So it's 01, which in terms of our zoning districts is one of the most restrictive um, districts because it basically allows for office. Kind of, that's it. Um, as you may know or are here um, you know the office market isn't really optimistic right now um, especially on the, on the heels of covid and so we're getting a lot of questions from brokers if the planning commission or if the city planning commission would consider other uses on this site um, there is a demand for you know, some other uses um, if you hear pamela vlentic in our office talk you know our industrial vacancy rates are always very low we have a number of sites just north of this that are zoned our regional employment center um, so we thought maybe opening it up to some of those uses, which would allow for some things like light industrial, some R&D, some, um, you know, even some of the places like um, gymnastics and dance studios and, and fitness places. Um, and we've also had a request for townhomes, strictly townhomes, not retail in the front, but just to allow for some different type of housing product in this area that would be, you know, um, within close area to the, to the employment center there. And so we said, hey, you know, we have a planning commission tomorrow night. Let's just pick their brains and get a quick what you think. Because I know the last time we talked about it, it was, it was a, I remember, a very definitive, let's keep it office. Um, but that was four or five years ago. So just wanted to bounce off, you know, we're not committing you to anything. Just wanted to get the temperature of what you guys think of considering other uses on these sites. And I actually just want to verify, correct, I want to make sure I have the right location. Um, Can you do the um, Google Earth? It's the greenhouse. It's on, across from J.B. Davies, view. Walgreens, we talked about earlier. Okay. Yeah, so Kristen put the cursor in front of it. It's been vacant for many, many years. And the trees are growing through it. Yeah, yeah. And then if you scroll, if you can go maybe just a little bit north, Kristen, um, there's, so th that house goes with it. and. Then there's two other houses that have some businesses that are in it, that like blue house there. Um, if you tr turn in towards it. Yeah, that have kind of marginal business. They were both houses that were converted to businesses that I think some are, they, they've been for sale. They've had, like I said, marginal businesses in and out of them. So there's definitely a desire to sell these properties, um, but both properties indicate that office is not happening at these locations. And it's, you know, it's, Crook, it's a prime location on Crooks Road, south of a highway interchange, across the street from, you know, and, and just north of, you know, some bars and restaurants, some retail. So, you know, we think, you know, it could be reasonable to ask for either of these uses in light of recent years. But again, we didn't want to speak out of turn. And before they, we sent someone down a rabbit hole of, of the wrong direction, we thought we'd get a, Casual conversation with no strings attached, just what you think. Okay, Mr. Kelsunas. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do live down the street from here, and I pass by it every day, almost. And I watch the trees growing out the greenhouse, and I think it sort of proved your point. What can we do outside of office? Now, the what I'll call success of the Rochester house 
has shocked me because I did not think that a restaurant in that area um, of that type and caliber, as nice as it looks, would really work in that area. But every time I drive by, it is full. And, and I'm happy, and this is great. So seeing the progress that we're making there, I think the next step of trying to work across down the road to try to improve it, I think that opportunity is there outside of office. Now, why didn't we like what we saw before? This property was different than the Bulliard Lumber property because we had both of them come in front of us at the same time. The Bulliard, this, the applicant, prospective applicant, because it was a discussion, came in, I need to have a four-story hotel, and if I have anything less, we're not gonna make any money, and I need to have all the restaurants in the front, and I can't have any parking because I can't make any money. That's pretty much how I would sum up that proposal. Um, I'm for something flexible in that area, but I am against the height, especially for those neighbors. If we're talking townhomes like the disaster, and I'll say disaster, as you know, in Troy, where I have townhomes stacked up four stories high, stuffed in the corners against neighbors, I'm not interested in that. But seeing it's a PUD, we could potentially have flexibility with that. So those are my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hooper. I support a REC. I would think that would open it up. Let's see. I don't have any other commissioner waiting to speak, so I guess that's the input. Thank you. Okay, I would actually at this point like to congratulate Mo and her retirement like to wish you a happy retirement. It's been awesome to work with you for so many years. In fact, I can't believe 20 years has gone by. It's, um, <laughs> I mean, you've, you've been, when I say I've always appreciated everything, you are awesome to work with. There's, there's nothing. If I needed an answer to a question or a hard copy of something or et cetera, et cetera, you were always on top of it. I, I always had what I needed and I really do appreciate that. And of course, I appreciate your sense of humor. Always makes me smile. So I'm really gonna miss you and I hope you have fun in whatever you choose to do. I think all deserve microphone. <laughs> <laughs> On the computer. Uh, Ms. Rodiger, I, I usually use so. Mo as my go-to source for anything in the city, and she's always responsive at having that every se at every moment. You can always get an answer from her. Who's replacing her? Who could I talk to now for that? It'll be the person oh, that no, we hired to replace her. Okay. <laughs> good okay, good. <laughs> and of course, I didn't mention, which is very important, that your minutes are phenomenal. I mean, they always have been phenomenal. There's never any question about what happened at a meeting when you're done reading those minutes. You're, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. the detail. Microphone, so we hear you. That you just, you know, do the motions or just a couple of sentences, but since we were never televised, you know, it, it's actually easier to do verbatim minutes. But yeah, it does kind of give you an idea of what happened. But now that you're televised, you know, the new person might say, well, you don't really need to have verbatim, I don't know. But that's for you guys to decide. 
I, I hope we have a decision. <laughs> yeah, their minutes are awesome. And it is televised, someone could watch it, but it is such a good record. Uh, if you weren't at a meeting, you feel like you were there. And even reviewing it, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we're re-looking at something a year later. And if you ever had a question mark, all those details are there on what anyone and everyone thought. So. Yes, well, we, um, Kristen and I and our team, we have uh, conducted interviews. We expect to have someone on board before our August meeting. Um, they are well versed in minute taking. Um, that was one of the things that was a challenge in hiring, um, you know, in trying to find someone to replace Maureen. As you may imagine, minute taking is somewhat of a dying art, um, and it's hard to find people who, who can do that. Um, did, did you warn them about me? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Did you warn them about me and all the circles I spin into Not yet. when I'm speaking? Not yet. All right, Not good. Yet. Don't. Um, but yeah, so we're we're excited to have a very. Um, experienced person joining us um, in August, so. Good. Yep, that is awesome. We're gonna miss you and we're thankful we'll for you. you. And we're happy for you. We're sad for us, but we're happy for you. Uh, i just like to um, bring up that our next meeting date is August 17th, 2021. And. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Kalsunas. There's cookies behind us, so I would love to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay, do I have a second? Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Kalsunas, seconded by Ms. Neubauer for an adjournment. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes unanimously.